Tonight is the historical background of a poem which, in its poetic form, is extremely legendary. I have recited the poem many times since I wrote it in 1971, but I have never discussed the original historical basis of that poem. The historical basis of this poem occurred uh, the, uh, just before the fourth Midrealm Crown Tourney, which was the first one held in Middle Marches. Now, in background, I should say that there was at that time an extraordinarily beautiful and intelligent lady to whom I wrote poems under the poetic name, the Sanhal of Murasaki. That was neither her modern name nor her society name. That was the name to whom well, I wrote her poems. Um, and I think we'll leave it at that. <coughs> but um, she and a number of other people uh, came in early for the tournament and things being, I may say, quite informal in the society in those days, we simply put them up in the basement of the building where we were going to have the feast after the tournament the next day, which is actually the United Christian Fellowship Center at Bowling Green State University. Now, I went home to my cozy home, uh, which is about 15 minutes walk away. What I did not know was that the custodian of the building turned off the heat and went home and left all these people freezing in the basement on a cold autumn night. Now, the next morning, I came into the building, went down the stairs into the basement, and what I saw was the Lady Murasaki cuddled in the arms of a, another gentleman, whose name I think we'll also omit. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, they had the tournament, I went out in two fights, Andrew of Sodom Rest won, thereby becoming the first uh, Middle Marches man to win a crown tourney. Uh, but uh, afterwards, the Lady Murasaki wrote to me and said, I saw your face when you came down the stairs and I want to assure you that there was nothing uh, improper between myself and that gentleman. He was just trying to keep me warm on the freezing cold floor. Now I implicitly believe that. I want to say that I truly implicitly believe that. Uh, both persons involved were very honorable persons. But as a poet, <laughs> resist the opportunity uh, to write a poem in which the episode was very differently presented. Um, and uh, it is an albed. Now, as some of you may know, an albed is a dawn song. Uh, the usual tradition is that it's a song in which the lover is leaving his lady at dawn after having spent the night with her. However, I called mine the albed of a bitter dawn, and it assumed that the lover was saying farewell to his lady after she had spent the night with somebody else. <laughs> I also assume, instead of making it a crown tournament, that this was a real and terrible war, and one that was in some sense being fought over the lady, like, say, Helen of Troy. <laughs> so that's the assumed background of the Albert, which is as follows. Lady, to wake you from the warming arms of one who loves at least as well as I, were hardly right 
yet still I say arise, for in this dawn where many men shall die, I would see once before I dare those harms, that fair cause wherefore stark and dead shall lie, myself and many more good men besides. Alas, so beds are drowned in war's alarms, the trumpet calls us all our might to try. Though you wake now, you will not meet my eye, for I must go and leave you sleeping here. The Lord and your new love defend you, dear. Oh. <laughs>